Well, hello. Here we are for the last part of chapter 13. Um, like I was saying in, in the previous recording, you know, even though Ash physically is weak and very vulnerable, he's been very clever and boxing clever, as they say. Um, and he's thrown the gauntlet down to Rathir, really. Now, let's see how Rathir responds. I mean, his last words were, you're still a coward. What an insult. OK, here we go. The murmur among the watching rats grew to an angry chatter, whether directed at Rathir or Ash, Gavel couldn't tell. Rats were staring at Rathir and his big rats, nudging one another and gesturing. They don't know, Gavel thought. They don't know what to believe. He silently willed the nameless to see the truth, to turn against their Akla. And at that moment, a voice called out from the ranks, shrill and loud, and filled with defiance and fear. He's right! The white rat's right! Rat's head snapped around to see who had spoken. A small figure stepped from the grasses, the other side of Rathir from Ash, and Gavel felt his heart clench. This rat, standing on the Notre Dame stone and defying her Akla, was Hope. Rathir's eyes blazed, fixed on her form. He nodded to a big rat who slunk unnoticed into the grasses. He's right that Rathir stole our names, Hope said, glaring over to where Rathir stood. But he can't have mine, not any more. My mother named me in the nest, deep in secret where even Rathir couldn't hear. And now her voice carried clearly in the hush that had fallen. My name is Dothan. Do you hear me, Rathir? I found it for myself, and I'm earning it right now. I have killed no one, but still I earn my name, and that's why he's scared. She raised her paws, pleading with the other rats. Are you listening? I'm telling you, he's scared, she shouted. He's scared because he knows you can have your names too, that you'll take them back. He's... Her words broke off in a sharp squeak. A big rat had leapt from the dark and grasped her in his paws. She cried out and battled as she was borne down beneath its weight, and then dragged, struggling, back from the moonlight and into the grasses. The other rat stood motionless as the grasses closed behind her, and her squeaks faded to silence. Oh, Hazel. Gabble's gaze raked the place where Hope had been, desperately seeking any sign that she had escaped but a deathly silence hung over Notre Dame. Even Ash was staring at the grasses, momentarily unable to speak. Gabble hung his head. They didn't help her, he whispered. Look at them. They're just standing there. But Feather's grip on his shoulder tightened. No, she said. Look. A ripple of shock or anger ran through the nameless. Whispers passed between rats until the grasses rustled with disquiet. The sound ebbed and flowed around Rathir before settling to a brooding calm. Gavel raised his head. He had heard a calm like this before. He had felt it in the hen burrow in the moments before the birds attacked. And now, in its wake, an upwelling of rage gathered and broke out in an angry chatter, livid and resentful. Voices rose, directing fury at Rathir and his big rats. Fights erupted among the damp landers, and the big rats were glaring, boxing and nipping at the rats around them, trying to keep the nameless at bay. But their actions only intensified the noise. Oh dear, Rathir, Ash taunted, eyes shining. Your rats aren't too happy. And I can't say I blame them. I wouldn't want to be treated like that. And now Ash's smile returned, scornful on his face. So come on, I'm waiting. Are you coming out here to fight? Or are you going to send a big rat to do that for you? Shouts, whistles and furious squeaks almost drowned Ash's words. Rathir's head swivelled this way and that, seeking an escape from Ash's mockery and his clan's fury. But he found none. Ash and Hope between them had left him no choice. If he refused to face Ash, everything he had ever told the Chosen would be shown to be hollow. 
and then he knew his clan would turn on him. Rathir lifted his head. Very well, he said. If you will have it so, then so it must be. The commotion died away as Rathir stepped out onto the stone. The hush gathered and deepened as he paced towards Ash, who stood unflinching at his approach. Ash turned, now grinning at the damp landers, enjoying the trouble he had caused. The sight twisted in Gabal with a mix of joy and sorrow. This was the Ash he knew, doing what he did best and enjoying every single moment of it. Now there's a brave rat, Ash called. That's more like it. He glanced back to Gabal's small group and raised a paw. Then Ash muttered something below his breath. Gabal thought he caught the words. And now we'll see who fears the taker. Ash waited until Rathir was a few short lengths from where he stood and then he stretched his muzzle to the sky. I hope you're ready for this, Rathir, he said, because I am. I always have been. Then he raised his eyes to the sky, the sky and squeaked high and clear in a long call that echoed from the Notre Dame stone. And as Ash drew a breath, an answering call sounded from the hen burrow. Gabble spun to see Shrill, his muzzle straining to the mood, yell at Moon, sorry, yelling for his cat with everything he had. Ash whipped around, frowning, but when he saw Shrill, he grinned, raised his face again, and called out in a long, pining note that echoed against Shrill's over and over, until it was impossible to hear where one began and the other ended. The rats in the verge stopped moving, whiskers and ears up, scanning for danger. Rathir, too, stopped his advance, alert and listening, and again Ash yelled out, and again. Shrill answered him. Over and over, the two rats filled the air with their cat calls, and Gavel realised, with a surge in his heart, that new cries had joined theirs, cries that came from the verge and rose up from the ranks of the nameless. More and more rats began to squeak and shout, and the din mounted. The nameless, led by Ash, poured their defiance up to the taker's moon. What are they doing? came Feather's voice from beside Gabble. Gabble, what are they doing? But Gabble didn't answer. He took a hesitant step forwards, then stopped. He couldn't help. He had promised. The noise was everywhere, almost too loud to bear, and in the centre of it stood two rats. Ash, crying out with everything he had, and Rathir, one paw lifted, eyes darting from rat to rat in the verge. Gabble saw the sinews straining in his brother's neck as Ash, summoning one final shout, collapsed, gasping, onto all fours. And in that instant, every cry ceased. The sound echoed on in the night before dying away to nothing. And now the only noise was the crackling from Ash's chest as he dragged it the air while tears made red tracks down his face. And still Rathir stood there, one paw raised. The breeze blew softly, whispering in the grasses. It carried only Ash's laboured breathing. Everything else was still. Then, around the Hember corner, slunk a dark shape. The cat limped as it came, but its ears were pricked, and its pace was eager. It wove a sinuous path along the wall, then stepped out into the open. Its head swung as it ran, seeking the source of the call that had summoned it. The damp landers spotted it with terrified whispers and stifled cries, but then the cat spied the pair of rats facing one another in the very centre of Notre Dame. It stopped with a hiss and sank into a crouch, tail flicking. Its eyes were locked onto Ash and Rathir, Gabble could barely breathe. A dash and a lunge and it could take either. With fear, watching its huge form seemed frozen, motionless. But then he began, slowly and cautiously, to crouch. Muscles bunched beneath his fur as he readied himself to run. Ash turned to follow the direction of the fear's gaze. He coughed and straightened, ears up. Ooh, he said, we've got a cat. Now that's what I call fun. He turned to Rathir. 
But which rat is it hunting, do you reckon? The small one or the big one? He blinked, an innocent look on his face. Shall we find out? Rathir began to shake, his paws trembled. His gaze never left the cat and his breathing was shallow and fast. And then, moving almost imperceptibly slowly, he began to creep away, sidling to the verge. The cat focused on the movement. It sneaked forward a pace, settled back over its paws, and in a rush it was on Rathir and attacking. Rathir uttered a single terrible scream as he rolled down beneath its weight. There was a confusion of raking claws and shrieks, and the cat skittered back a pace. In that instant, Rathir was on his feet and fleeing for his life, head down and scurrying for the damp lands. The cat darted after him, pawing and leaping, trying to bring down its prey. Rathir dived for the grasses and disappeared. The cat jumped after him but lost its footing, rolling over in the grass. It came up and mewed in frustration, paws battering the ground in front of it. Ah! Ash cried, exultation written across his face. Ah! You see? You see? He shouted. That was your Akla running away. Ash began to cough, but he raised his voice still further. That coward was the rat who took your names. Him and these big rats. Ash was choking and dragging at the air now, but still he kept shouting. Chosen, I, I promised you your names. Now's your time. Go and take them. Take them back from these cowards of rats. Jeers and shouts rang out from the damp landers and the verge as the nameless turned on their big rats. Gabble watched in horrified fascination as the largest rats flailed, half hidden among the stalks, snarling and clawing at unseen ranks of smaller forms that flew at them, dragging them down amongst the stems. He glimpsed a piebald rat fighting clear before sprinting away, then a big rat and another pelted crazily down the grasses, some le le sorry, some limping and some squeaking in fear, but all fleeing the anger of their clan. And down the verge the cat waited, striking at any rat who came too close. It leapt and twisted, sending rats scrambling away. And only when the last of the chosen was lost from sight did it turn, eyes gleaming, back to face Notreland. Rathir and his big rats were gone, and now only the nameless remained, filling the night with their hushed rustling, their breathing, and the low squeaking of the injured. And in front of them all, a lone white rat still stood on his haunches, wheezing and laughing at the world, the cat's eyes fixed on Ash. It hunkered down low and began to inch forwards. Ash spotted it. He blinked. Come on, Ash, thought Gabble. You've done everything you can. Now get back to where it's safe. The cat eased closer. Ash stared at it, a strange smile on his face. Please, Ash, please come back. But Gabble knew with aching certainty that Ash had truly gone beyond him. He saw his brother's smile broaden as he turned a final time to the damp flanders. Dark tears streamed down his cheeks. He dragged down a gasping breath that gurgled deeply within him, and he raised his voice a final time. Chosen, you have your names. You've earned them in the fight, and you'll find them in your hearts. Ash gasped at the air. Now go home, he cried. Go and live. Oh, I've gone all goosebumpy, Hazel. The cat leapt, unthinking. Gabble began to run, breaking his promise and casting himself madly into Notre Dame. But Paul's grabbed him from behind, bore him down and held him. Pinned him over, but head up and reaching out for his brother, Gabble gazed across the stone. He could not bear to see where his brother had stood. Instead, his eyes searched for anything that could help him, anything that was not death. The grasses reflected the moon in uncountable broken dazzles that bobbed and weaved as the damp landers scampered away. And there, at the very edge, was a single rat who was not running. 
but standing alone and looking back at him. As her gaze fastened on his, Gabble felt a jolt of recognition. She was far away, but he knew her. It was the rat who had not long before he had faced her heckler and claimed from him her name, Dothan, a name that in old rant meant simply hope. A tremulous smile spread across her face. She lingered there as the lights danced around her and she bowed her head to him, stepped back amongst the grasses and was gone. Gavel became aware of Heather's voice in his ear, urging and pleading, Gavel, you can't help him. Come back, come on. He allowed himself to be brought to his feet. He glanced back at the grass to the strange beauty of the dancing lights. But a cloud had passed across the moon and the grasses were just grasses once more, mottled and greyish. Feather, though her expression filled with worry, was luminous in his eyes. Gabble stared at her while her paws shook him, insistent on his shoulders. Ooh, listening to me? Run, I said. Come on, move. Gabble pulled his attention from her face to her words. From somewhere, he found that courage to ask what he needed to know. Ash, the cat? Feather nodded, her eyes wide. Yes, I'm so sorry. Gabble nodded. I see. He let her lead him to the Henborough. Behind him in Notreland, he sent the silence surge back. He heard the quiet movements of the few remaining Dampflanders, the no longer nameless, as they moved off. He hoped they would run back to their clan lands, pour back down their runs and flood into their burrows. He hoped they would wash Rathia's poison away. He hoped that finally they could live like true rats. Ash had given them what they needed. Perhaps it was enough, perhaps not. But none of it seemed to matter much. Not now Ash was gone. Gavel walked past Argus, who lowered his head, and Snip, who smiled sadly, and placed a paw on his fur. Shrill stepped aside, still looking proudly away for his cat and Gabble ducked beneath the wood, following Feather back up the passage, ready to tell the mothers the story of their son. Oh, and that's the end of chapter 13. My goodness me. I mean, I think we kind of knew it was coming. Sorry, I'm going to totally ignore that. We knew that was coming. I'll just wait for it to finish, Hazel, sorry. my brother Robert or one of my brothers anyway um that was a, a tremendously exciting chapter it had a bit of everything in it didn't it um I mean I'm really sorry that Ash has come to the end of his life but like I said I think we kind of knew Hazel wasn't it and actually it's it's what he wanted he did find his peace there and Gabble, his, his brother, really struggled with that, didn't he, to not go and help him. But he kept true to his promise to his brother, and he did not. So, even though that's a sad ending to that chapter, I'm going to hold on to the fact that Ash fulfilled what he wanted to do, and he felt good about that. So, we have one chapter left to go, which will be split into two over Thursday and Friday. So I hope you've had another great day. I've just realised this is nearly 20 minutes long. I'm so sorry, but it was definitely worth it, wasn't it? And I will catch up with you again tomorrow. Okay, bye for now. Bye.